this book provides an excellent account of the early history of the First Baptist Church in LaGrange. It was published in 1978 and now we are adding to the rich history of our church in other ways. The Archives and History Committee of First Baptist Church on the Square is, has an ongoing oral history project. And I guess you could say this is the latest chapter in that particular project. The objective is to not only document significant events in the life of our church, but also to visually record the people who are involved. Our hope is that it, this will provide future generations as well as our present generation with a candid glimpse of both the people and the events. Reverend Jerome Shipman, I count it a privilege to visit with you this morning, Thank January 29th, 2010. I'm sure that you will agree that our people have made First Baptist Church an instrument for God in ministry to its members and in outreach to our local area as well as the world. Our purpose today is to document the more than a decade long ongoing uh, relationship between First Baptist Church and the New Macedonia Baptist Church. It's a part of our mission outreach. Joining us today is Reverend Aaron McCullough, Troop Association Ministry, a missionary. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the uh, association has played a vital role in the growth of New Macedonia Church, and I appreciate your being with us, Brother Aaron. My to, privilege to, to be with you. Add to the background and, and the history of that development, a very significant development, I might add. Uh, let's begin uh, with, uh, with you as we talk about the Troop Baptist. First, uh, just a bit about you. Uh, Aaron, that's the name right out of the Bible. Very biblical name. Uh, my, in fact, both of my names are. My parents wanted a biblical name for their baby boy child. So they chose John out of the Bible and Aaron out of the Bible. And they also wanted a name that, quote, nobody else in the family had. Okay. And they named me John Aaron McCullough, only to find out a couple of two or three years later that I have a first cousin with the same identical name, John Aaron McCullough. So that didn't work. But well, that's, that's the reasoning behind that. Okay, thank you for, sh for sharing that. Okay. Uh, I understand that your ministerial career is uh, entirely in the Troop County area. Uh, tell us about your call to the ministry, Brother Aaron, Aaron and uh, a little bit about your career to date. Uh, you are correct that uh, you're speaking to one of the few preachers you'll ever, or pastors you'll ever speak to has never had to move. All my pastors have been within 15 minutes of my hometown, LaGrange. And then the, uh, the Lord put me in this Troop Baptist Association, Associational Missionary. Uh, my call was uh, around 20 three years old when God called me into the ministry. A uh, very unique call. He uh, had to put me in basic training in the Army and to really get my attention and a lot of things happened there but through that God got my attention and I surrendered to the call to preach and uh, been going ever since. I was about 23 years old and I'm, uh, as we're filming this today I'm, I'm 54 so it's been a while. Yes it has. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Share just a bit about your family, Brother Aaron. I'm married to the former Mary Ann Hale of LaGrange. Uh, we've been married for 35 years. We have four children, two boys, uh, two girls. Uh, currently we have seven grandchildren, uh, six granddaughters, and one little hard-headed grandboy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds interesting. And I know when you get together, you have a great time. Yes, we do. Yes, uh, we do. When did you first meet uh, Jerome? And... How, how did he and his church become a part of, of the association? I first met Pastor Shipman probably 10, 12 years ago. 
uh, unique story. My father, uh, my father, my brother, is also a pastor and was in this association at that time. And both he and Pastor Shipman are bu were bus drivers at that time. Oh yes. And my brother had been talking to him about the association and invited him to one of our Monday morning prayer meetings that the pastors had. Uh, Pastor Shipman showed up uh, that morning at Reed's Chapel Baptist Church in West Point, Georgia, uh, and my brother did not, and <laughs> nobody knew who Pastor Shipman oh, was. I see. And he walked in dressed to the <clears throat> nines and took over the meeting, and he took over everything since then. It's been a wonderful, ongoing relationship since then. Great, great. Sounds interesting. Brother Jerome. Before we get to New Macedonia Church, tell us about your personal background of uh, uh, when and where you accepted Christ and were baptized and and how uh, and when did you feel the call to the ministry? Well, uh, Brother Jack, uh, it's a privilege of being here again. We thank you for allowing us to be here. But at the time that God uh, came into my life, I was around by uh, Brother Aaron, age around 22, 23, at the calling of my life that God saved me and set me free. And I was uh, living in Ozark, Alabama, my original home. I see. And I was a uh, construction worker, traveling in construction with Daniel Construction, mm -hmm. and that's how I got to LaGrange. I see. And uh, as I stayed here in LaGrange, and uh, uh, I stayed here at the job, went out, I continued to stay with LaGrange, in LaGrange, and I began to work for a company called Desert. And I, I wind up staying here, and God blessed me at the age of 22, 23, to start preaching when I surrendered to him totally, completely. Yes. And I've been preaching ever since. Good for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Would you share just a bit about your family? Well, when I came here, I came here with Dane Construction, like I said, and I've always been in construction all my life. And then when the job was over, which was about... 22 years ago now, we built Kevin Clark, that's how I got to LaGrange. I see. And now, uh, when I was getting ready to leave LaGrange, and this is this one I went, met my wife, Peggy. She was an acres at the time, but now she's a shipman. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, we, we thank God for meeting her, and she really have made a lot of difference in my life, and we have five kids and eight grandkids. Okay, well, thank you. Did you pass to other churches before New Macedonia? <laughs> No, sir, I did not. I evangelized most of my ministry in uh, Macedonia at the time with Macedonia. And uh, that's when I began as an interim pastor for two Sundays. And then they realized that then uh, they no longer had a pastor. So they asked me what I sit in. I see. And I started from that point. Okay. Now to New Macedonia then. Did your call to New Macedonia... Uh, come as a replacement minister, or, or were you called to form a new church? I was, I was, I was called to preach at the church at Macedonia one Sunday, and uh, then I was called again a following Sunday, and then that's when we realized that they didn't have a pastor. And then by me being at those two Sunday, uh, they enjoyed the Word of God, and they asked me would I stay around to help them out. So I stayed around, and they asked me. Well, I'd be interested in being a pastor until I decide to leave. So I'm still there. <laughs> still there, and we're glad you are. Okay, well, at the time you met Brother Aaron, uh, where was the church uh, located then, and uh, what was the approximate membership of your church? Well, at the time that I met Brother Aaron, uh, we was at a uh, membership of seven when I started there. And uh, over so over you years, said seven, 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 members. seven members, seven members, okay. seven members at Macedonia. Yes. When I began it there, and when I met Brother Aaron, and the church started growing within that year, which we got up to about seventy-five members within that year, mm -hmm. and we are grown where we was at, and mm -hmm. and God just laid on my mind to start looking for something in the city. I didn't know at the time that I was going to run across uh, Wall Street Baptist Church at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, God just led me that way, and I seen the, the building, and I, I, I seen a car park there, and I stopped and asked the people were the build, building available. And at the time, the pastor, Steve Garner, was there, and he said it's not available right now, but we're looking in to relocate it. <clears throat> and I said, that's good. And this, that's when I started touching bases with the association, asking Brother Evan, what do I need to do, who do I need to see about this, though he sent me 
in the direction that I need to go to work on this situation. I see. Well, it's, uh, it's interesting. You evidently were the first African-American minister to become a part of the Troop Association. That is correct. Baptist Detroit Association. Uh, share just a bit about how that went. Well, it goes it go back to, uh, I have to give honor to God again and Brother Billy McCullum, which is Aaron brother, oh, yes. that it first introduced me to the, the yeah. Southern Baptist right. Association. Mm -hmm. He invited me a couple of months, I said I'll be there. Then he invited me again, I made my business to be there, and I didn't know how to dress, but I dressed like I usually dress. I just dressed like Jerome dressed. So and made, they, and made a real impression on that. <laughs> yeah. all right. and, then that, and that's how it all began, and I started just going to the meeting every Monday because my, my job allowed me while I was able to go on Monday morning, so as I started going, I said, I'm gonna go one more time. This is what I said to myself. I and as I went, I, I, I noticed that me and Brother Aaron were getting close together. He would crack a joke, I'd crack a joke. I'd say, yeah, I like this guy, you know. <laughs> All right. And uh, God just bonded us together, and, and we got closer, we got more into the association yes. by going to the meeting in, in the pastor fellowship. Great. And as a result of your experience, I understand that now there are other African-American pastors who are members of the Baptist Association. That is correct. When we first came in, I think, if I'm not correct, Brother Aaron can correct me, we are the first black African-American church that, is that joined the True Kind Association. That's correct. And after that, uh, there were several more, started looking at it, and after I was in about a year, I began to uh, talk to some more preachers and pastors about it. I said, man, this is something you ought to look into. Yeah. You know, I said, I, ain't, I never wanted to be just all one racial church. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be mixed for some reason. I always wanted to do that. I and I didn't know how I was going to do it. Sure. But God allowed and opened the door through the association yes. to become part of that. Yes. And as I, as I attended the meeting, I got more into it, and I went back and shared it with the congregation. And they said, we were looking into it, and that's where we went from that. Good. I appreciate you sharing. Yes, that. sir. That's a good story. Well, about this time, I believe, a possible new location for your church became available, and uh, you were able to pursue that. Yes. Tell us any more about that. Is that I want to say that, you know, <clears throat> by the help of First Baptist in Rosemont, Brother Aaron McCullen, and help pushing the issue, uh, Dr. Paul Baxter, Max McCoy, yes. really took the role of this, this uh, situation and, and getting the the new groundbreaking. And matter of fact, uh, Dr. Baxter is the one that did the, the first service of the groundbreaking. Oh, yes. And I wanna, I wanna thank God for that and allowing us to be able to work with people and fellowship with people like Dr. Baxter, Michael McCoy, and Brother Aaron McCullough and themselves because we have to give that credit to what credit is due. Sure. And Dr. Baxter and Michael McCoy play that role along with Brother McCullough. Yeah. Good, good. Now, Brother Aaron, would, would you elaborate a little on that, too? I'd be glad to. Uh, really, uh, Paul Baxter, Dr. Baxter, and Max McCord were really the, I'd say, the two driving forces behind this. That's right. Uh, and they contacted the Georgia Baptist Convention, mm -hmm. and through their uh, efforts there, were able to secure both grants and loans mm -hmm. uh, in an amount that was sufficient for the, uh, them to purchase the church. And on the day this first Sunday they moved in, uh, they moved into a fully equipped, fully furnished church that the only thing it was lacking was members. They just had to show up and mm -hmm. it was a wonderful thing that God uh, God done there. And just picking up a little bit on what you've already discussed, God indeed, indeed did use and had, continues to use Pastor Shipman uh, as the key that fits the lock. He, I think he, with his personality, He's the only key that would fit that lock that has torn down some walls that need to have been needed to have been torn down. Yes. And we are truly now becoming a multicultural association. Not only do we have African American churches, but we have a Korean church uh, yes, through, that's right. through your effort, and we also have a Hispanic church. And uh, and uh, it's all goes back to that. And I'm appreciative yeah. of the Lord for that. Good, good. Uh, well, let me. Uh, Continue, Brother Shipman. I understand that you spend every every Thursday at our church now 
handling the benevolence program, the personal aid uh, ministry that we have at our church. Would you tell us a little bit about your involvement there? Yes. Also, before I get to that point, I did leave out something that's very important because when I started with First Baptist and become the, the mission church for First Baptist, I began to start in the soup kitchen. And I met a great gentleman named Jim Lee, yeah. which is still there, and I, 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 I fell in love with his spirit. Yes. He was, he's a great guy. And that's where we really got started at, in the soup kitchen. And then not only did I grow closer to, to Dr. Baxter, but I grew closer to the church family. But in the meantime, there was uh, some position being opened. And uh, at the time, Rod was uh, the benevolent minister at the time. And uh, then he was getting ready to move, relocate. And I thought about it coming to my mind. I said, I would like to do that myself. You know, and I, I didn't say to charge anybody to do anything. I said, St. First Baptist reached out and gave us a, a helping hand that I, should, I can do something for them. And that's when I, God put in my spirit to take over this benevolent mm -hmm. on Thursday, one day out of the week. Yes. And God have blessed me with that benevolent. And I believe at the same time, God has allowed me to have a discerning of spirits. So I'll be able to pick up on the good spirits and the bad spirits. Okay. Might fall short sometimes. <laughs> but all my good days, I wait my bad days. <laughs> and I just like to thank God because of the benevolent and how that first Baptist reaches it out to the community by the help of God and through my help by God using me to work that benevolent the way he do. Thank you for sharing that. Very important. <clears throat> I'm glad, too, that you mentioned Jim Lee. As you may know, he's a longtime member of the Archives and History Committee of our church. And he is the facilitator, as I think you know now, for this particular project that we're doing here Correct. today. Uh, Jim Lee also <clears throat> has been for many years involved with the soup kitchen here. You touched on that briefly. But uh, let me ask you a question. Do you feel that the soup kitchens that operate in our city are beneficial to the community? I, I do believe, Brother Jack, that it's beneficial for the community. And I do believe that a lot of people see the personality in the, that Brother Jim had that bring them even there even more. Yes. Because he's kind to everybody. Yes. And then uh, at the same time, it's an outreach to the community. Yes. The people that we can't, that won't come to your church, they come to the soup kitchen. Yes. And that's why God did at that time laid on my heart for me to start a service at the soup kitchen. And I asked Brother Jim about it. He said that'd be a great thing to yes. do. So we started a, 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 a service in the soup kitchen yes. during lunchtime while they were eating out of the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you. And I, I know you enjoyed that experience. I enjoyed it very much. Great. Are there further comments that you have or Brother Aaron, uh, any comments you'd, you'd like to add at this time? Well, I would like to say that uh, I just want to bring in Paul Baxter's name for yeah. a moment. Yes. And to, Good. For, for generations to come to know that it was his vision, his spirit, uh, his uh, facilitating spirit, however you would say it, that has caused a lot of what we're talking about today to yeah. happen. It made, would not have happened. Made it possible. It made yeah. it possible. Yeah. And I appreciate him and the membership of First Baptist Church for all they do, not only with Pastor Shipman, but for the local association. They're a vital part of it. Yes. And I appreciate all of that. And I appreciate my friend, Pastor Chip, Shipman. Yes. Yes. Good man. Good man. Thank you. You, you all make a good team. I can, <laughs> I can see that. A good one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank both of you for taking time to, to visit with us today. And uh, on behalf of the the Archives and History Committee of our church. Uh, this has been a very helpful and very uh, informative, and I know it's, it's going to document, uh, as I said earlier, for not only our present generation, but future generations of right. people, this important uh, mission program that uh, we have going here, and has been going now for about 12 years, I believe, the relationship Amen. Your, your, That's churches. right. And I know by this experience, both churches 
really are blessed. They are and, blessed. And we appreciate your leadership of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brother Jack. God bless you. And we thank you, Brother Jack. God bless you. Yes, sir. Thank you.